Hi, my name is Susan Reed, and we're here at King Arthur Flower, where we run the Baking Education Center and the Baker's Hotline. The holidays are coming up, and I can tell you that on the Baker's Hotline, where we answer baking questions, the biggest issue that people have after baking with yeast is learning how to make a good pie crust. A lot of people are afraid of it. We call that pie anxiety. So today I'm going to show you how to make a two crust pie and it's a lot easier than you might think and with some of the tricks that I'll show you I'm hoping that you won't be afraid of it anymore. So the first thing we need to do is measure out our flour. It's very important that you have the right amount of flour so that you don't have a dry crumbly crust. Flour when it gets shipped has a tendency to get compacted every time it lands on a counter it settles down so what's in your bin can be kind of heavy. The right way to measure flour is to take a scoop and you want to stir it up a little bit, make it a little bit fluffy, put some air into it, sprinkle it into your measuring cup, and then use the straight edge to level it off. So a properly measured cup of flour should have four and a quarter ounces. That's how much it should weigh. If you just dig into this bin and pack it down, this cup of flour is going to weigh almost 20 or 30 percent more than that one does. So that is where your baked goods can have way too much flour in them and they can be heavy and dry and crumbly. So measuring is very important. This pie crust uses three cups of flour. I already have one already measured. So here we go. We're going to measure the second. That's two. And here goes the third. Three cups of flour. We're going to take a teaspoon and a half of salt, mix that in very lightly. First I'm going to put in the shortening and this has been in the refrigerator so it's a little bit cold. You don't have to be too terribly fussy. A lot of recipes and a lot of places that you'll see say so everything must be absolutely cold. It's better than not but I wouldn't get too hung up on it. Now I'm going to work this shortening into the flour with a pastry cutter. A lot of recipes that you'll read say cut the, f the fat in until it's the size of peas. And in this case for the first half we're going to go just about there. So that's cut in pretty finely. So if you can see the way that this looks it's got a little bit of lumps but nothing really really big. Now the next thing that we're going to put, be putting into this is the butter. And we're going to put in four ounces of butter, one stick. And to make our lives easier I'm going to take a bench knife and I'm just going to Okay, my bench knife has now done a big part of the work for me. I'm just going to scoop all this up toss it right in. Now I'm just going to get in here. This is a nice mud pie kind of thing to make. There's always the mud pie factor in cooking if you like to get your hands into things. This is a great recipe to start with. I'm just going to separate all these pieces of butter and toss them around, get a little flour onto them. Now that the butter is in here, I'm going to use my favorite tool just a little bit to cut it into chunks. Now when we teach people here at the Bacon Education Center to make pie, we very often have to walk around in the classroom and tell people step away from the pie crust. Because when you're nervous about something you have a tendency to work it too much. You either stir it too much or you want to handle it too much because you're afraid you're not doing it right. That's where pie anxiety comes in. What you want to do with this, I'm going to just take these pieces of butter and squish them to be flat. I'm not going to cut this up into little teeny tiny pieces. I want the butter to still be in much bigger pieces because this is where the flakiness is going to come from in your pie dough. Now a lot of people would say you got to be kidding. You really want it to look like that? That's not going to make pie. You're going to have big melted pools of butter. You wait. You just wait. Now comes the water. And the water you do want to have cold. A lot of people get very afraid of this. They're afraid they're going to put in too much water. 
and it's all going to be a big soggy mess. Doesn't have to be. Remember when you're cooking, you can always add more, but you can't take things out. So it's always good to sneak up on these things a little bit at a time. We're going to put between four and six ounces of water into this recipe. Um, so I'm just going to put it in a little bit at a time and see how the dough behaves. Depending on what the weather is like, flour can be like a sponge. Sometimes it needs more water, sometimes it needs less. In this case, we've had a very wet, soggy summer, so um, I don't want to add too much water. I'm going to put the water in about two tablespoons at a time. You can go one tablespoon at a time if you're nervous about it. It will just take a little bit longer. I'm just going to distribute it around the bowl, toss it around. Okay, that is, that's the one that got me close to where I want to go. Feel how this is. Okay, now I'm feeling some wet spots. And as you can see, the dough hasn't really come together. This is where I depart from a lot of advice you're going to see in recipes. In this, you can consider it your secret to make you a great pie crust maker. This mess has both wet and dry business in it. I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to dump it right out on a piece of parchment paper or wax paper. And I'm going to sort of arrange it in a bit of a line. Now this is a really wet spot, and obviously that's a really dry spot. How do I get this all mixed together without overworking it and make it really tough? I'm going to take this piece of parchment paper, and I am literally going to fold the dough over on itself. Kind of magic already. What I'm doing while I do this is redistributing the water and getting the dry parts to pick up some of the water from the wet parts. Okay, now that's still a pretty crumbly bit of dough, which tells me that I still need to add some more water. And now here's your other secret weapon. Instead of adding water onto this and making more wet spots, my secret weapon here is a mystery. So that means that the extra water is very evenly distributed. Aha. And all these crumbly bits now become part of the dough. I'm going to just turn this 90 degrees. And I'm going to give this extra crumbliness a shower. The other thing I'm doing as I fold this is creating layers. All those big squares of butter that you see right in here, that's a flake in the making. We've almost got this where we want it. We're going to give this last little crumbly bit a bit of a spritz. Fold everything in one more time. I love that. It's magic. It's so nice. OK. So now I have a nice collection of pie dough. Now if you're going to make a two crust pie, and this is enough dough for two crusts, I usually divide this a little bit unevenly because the bottom crust has to go down one side of the pie pan across and up the other side. So that bottom piece needs a little bit more dough than the top piece. So I'm going to take my bench knife and divide it about 60-40. And then I'm just going to take each chunk of dough and pat it into a nice round circle. Later on, you'll be happy that you did this because if you're going to roll something into a round circle, it is much easier if you start it as a round shape. So as I pat this all the way around, we're going to wrap these discs of dough in plastic and then we're going to chill them for about half an hour. As you can see, the dough has come together fairly, pretty nicely. The water has had a chance to redistribute itself. The flour has had a chance to rest and relax. So I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper, 
You can use wax paper too, that's fine. I'm just going to sprinkle it lightly and then I'm going to sprinkle the top of the dough very lightly. Next I'm going to take an all-purpose plastic bag and I'm going to cut up one side and across the bottom. You can use wax paper for this too. I'm going to cut up one side and down across the bottom. And this is going to go on top of my dough. I like food storage bags better than plastic wrap because it's a little bit heavier and it tends not to shift around quite as much. Now I'm going to roll this dough from the center to the outside. You don't want to go back and forth across your pie dough because that's going to make it tough. So I'm just going to press down. The nice thing about the plastic is I can see exactly where I'm going at all times. And I'm going to turn this whole sandwich a little bit and work from the center out. And since we started with a nice round edge, as you can see when I roll this pie dough out, I don't have any big desert cracks going on. Don't be afraid to pick it up and make sure that it isn't sticking to the bottom. I'm just going to straighten out the paper underneath. How big do you need this to be? You need your pie crust to be one to two inches bigger than the outside of your pie pan because the dough has to travel down one edge, across the bottom, back up, and you still want a little bit extra to flute the rim for decoration. So this is close. It's not quite there yet. I'm just going to give it a little bit more in all directions. That's more like it. Okay. That is about where I want it to be. Before you put this in here, it's a good idea to spray the bottom of the pan just a little tiny bit because when you spray the bottom of the pan, it makes it much easier to get the first slice of pie out of the pan. Now, how do we get this over here? You can roll it on top of a pin, but I find this method makes it much easier because I just do this. Simple enough. Now, I missed, as you can see. I'm off just by a little bit. Now that the dough is where I need it to be, I can trim it and make sure it's even all the way around. I'm just about right in this spot, but this spot has got a little too much. So it's just as simple as taking some scissors and making sure the edge is nice and even. Now this guy is a little bit on the shy side as far as the amount of dough that's there. So we're going to give it a little bit extra. Take some of that extra, put it right here, and tuck it back in. And once the dough is fluted, you're not going to know that that's there. Now there are a million ways to finish the top of a pie. Some, you, the first thing to do though, no matter what you do, is just take this edge and tuck it in all the way around the outside edge. And this little extra bit of dough on the edges is what you're going to work with to flute. Okay, now I'm almost, I'm almost finished. I'm going to just put a little flour on my hand so that I don't stick to it. And I'm just going to pinch the dough to make a nice pattern. You can, on a different kind of pie pan, you can take your two knuckles. You can just use that and help yourself this way. You can press it down with a fork. But this is pretty simple. Now this pie shell should rest in the refrigerator so that the butter and the shortening in it can firm up. So while this is in the refrigerator, we'll make our filling and get ready to get our pie in the oven.